Hey there, and welcome to the She Calls Her Shots podcast. Every week we chat through different business building topics that will help you gain clarity around your goals, find inspiration in your journey, and also help you create a life and a business that you love. My name is Krista and I'm a wedding and brand photographer and your go-to no fluff business coach. In these episodes, we talk through both the tactical strategies, habits, and the mindset work that will help you take those really big leaps. And we always focus on the real talk and the behind the scenes of what it takes to create a sustainable and a thriving business. Because let's be honest, the work isn't always glamorous, but it's always worth it. So girlfriend, let's make some moves and start calling our own shots. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the She Calls Her Shots podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to best meet our clients with genuine energy and to create an online presence, a marketing presence, and just a stronger ability to really be able to communicate ourselves, our values, and just who we are as people, all of our quirks, all of our fun personalities, and the things that make us us, and really embrace those in order to grow a successful business. And with me today, I have John Mansfield, and John is a wedding and a portrait photographer based in Texas. And you'll see early on, he has a passion for relationships. He has a mission to make the world a better place, but he's also a business coach, a podcaster, and just a general great guy and a family guy. I was actually a guest on John's podcast a few months ago as I'm recording this, and I'll link to that in the show notes, but he is just a wonderful light to the world. He just has such a great message. And that's why I'm so excited that we're talking about this particular message today on how we can meet and show up to our clients with a genuine, authentic energy. And before we dive in, I know that it's a new year. You might be asking yourself questions like, you know, how can I grow my business? How can I gain more clients? How can I improve my client experience for my current clients? You know, how can I start to work towards my goals for the new year? And I just want to encourage you, we're going to talk through a lot of that in this episode today around how to build a business that feels really authentic and aligned and on a timeline that actually feels um, doable and a timeline that actually makes sense for you and where you are in your business. And I know that I say this all the time, but I would genuinely love to connect with you in real life. It's sometimes, it feels a little funny because I feel like it's just me and my computer and my mic and I hit record, but I know that so many of you are out there and you're listening and you're downloading the episodes. And so if that's you, I would just love to encourage you, please send me a DM on Instagram. I think sometimes I connect with followers and I'll send them a message and you know, they have this moment of, oh my gosh, I've listened for so long, right? And I just want to encourage you, if that's you, like I would love to connect with you. You don't even have to say anything in the DM. You can just send, send over your favorite emoji and I'll reply back with mine and that's how we can start the conversation. But I just, I love getting to learn more about you and how I can be even more helpful as you're growing out your business. So all of that said, I'm so excited for this conversation with John. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Hello, John. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Krista. Thank you so much. I am very excited to be here and to chat with you today. Yes, me too. And um, for my listeners who don't know, I was actually a guest on John's podcast a couple of months ago. We had a great conversation, so I was excited to bring him in so that we can talk and you can hear all of the things that he has to share. And I'm I'm really looking forward to today's topic because I think that especially in like today's time, this is such an important way to grow a business authentically and that feels aligned with your values and who you want to be. So um So yeah, I'm really excited about that. But before we dive in, I'd love for you to just share a little bit about your journey, kind of what brought you here to where you are today, both in your life and in your business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I. You may have to rein me back because I. I tend to just like keep talking and talking. There are so many details (laughs) that I want to fit in. Um, but trying to condense my life real quick. Um, I'm a a a wedding portrait branding photographer uh, in the. Houston, Texas area, um, and really came to photography. I I was, I know it's kind of cliche, like, you know, I was that 12 year old with a camera uh, all the time, but I was that 12 year old with a camera. Uh, and all my friends were just like, 
you know, oh yeah, John's got his camera. And uh, I just always had one. I always loved just taking pictures of things, uh, trees and our pets. And uh, You and I would have been best friends. Yeah. I was that same person. Yeah, yeah. We would have, we would have just been <laughs> just showing each other all these. Taking things. random film photos of look, trees. Look at this bird's <laughs> nest that I found. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I was, I was that kid. And then in college, I um, worked at a wedding venue where I was just like, you know, helping put out tables and chairs and do all the manual labor stuff. And, um, and they had, they noticed that I had a camera. They had a, a couple who needed a, a, a very budget photographer. And, um, and I ended up shooting my first wedding 10 hour a day for $200. Oh, and man. yeah, which I thought was like jackpot. I was like 20 bucks an hour. This is so much yeah. <laughs> more than I'm getting paid. Um, and I, I fell in love with it. I, I loved, I, I had no idea what I was doing. Like no idea what I was doing in weddings, but for, uh, I just loved the, uh, the storytelling of their day and their love story and all of that. And I was like, okay, this is something I could see myself doing. And it took a couple of years uh, to actually start the business. So 2013 is when I started my business and then I uh, went full time in 2015. And it has been a roller coaster ride ever since then. I always wanted a job that would allow me um, that flexibility of working from home, being around the kids, being around, uh, with the family and, uh, and also getting to travel a little bit. And then once I started getting into photography, I was like, Oh, this could actually fit. This is uh this is great. So yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah. And then, you know, that morphed into a bunch of photographers asking me how I did certain things. And then I was like, okay, I guess I'm a teacher now. So I started teaching and mentoring, started a podcast, started doing workshops. Uh, that was all about four years ago or so. And I know you also have um, like a team of people that you work with. When did you kind of start launching that side of the business? Yeah, that was, let's see, we started that in, um, I kind of started cultivating that, putting some feelers out there in like late 2018. And then spring of 2019 um, is whenever I brought on my first associate and um, she started working with me, kind of moved up from second shooter to primary. And uh, yeah, so now I've got a team of five, uh, I guess six, including me. Um, and yeah, doing a photo and video and I've got an album designer and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's been a journey for sure. Not, not easy bringing on associates. Yeah, that well, that's probably a whole nother journey. Oh, there's yeah. like the journey of building the business, right. and there's the journey of actually building out the business. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I love that, and yeah, I was definitely that kid that had their camera all the time, and I used to shoot film, and like you know, I was however old I was, twelve, thirteen. I didn't have money to do any of this, so it was a very it was a hobby that lasted a short amount of time yes. until I was like eighteen, and then I finally bought like a. DSLR. I was like, oh, I can take all these pictures for free. This is great. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go down to like the CVS and get yeah <laughs> uh, spend an arm and a leg getting everything developed and and all that. Uh, yeah, totally. I still miss oh, that. So like, funny. I in in college, I had a dark room and I was able to go in there for free and just develop my own photos. And oh, that's amazing. It was it was the best time. I, I still, yeah. I'm like, I still have my college ID. I could probably, you know, uh, pull off, you know, a 21 year old, maybe. Yeah, you could pass off. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I'm excited about this topic today because I feel like this is something that you, that you do so well and you've obviously done so well as you've grown your business and just this idea of meeting your clients with your own genuine energy and, when it, especially when it comes to marketing and your online presence, just like mm. really kind of owning who you are and your personality and using that to grow a business. Um, so I'd love to kind of hear, I guess, first how how you feel like that has helped you grow throughout the years. Yeah, I I, I feel like that has helped gr help the business grow just being myself and not uh, putting on like a facade of. I'm a business owner. I, I know whenever I first started, 
I felt like I had to be very professional. And all of my email correspondence was just like, dear so-and-so, thank you so much for inquiring about this date. And I was just very formal because that's all that I knew was, you know, formalities of, you know, in college and how to write and, you know, indenting all these lines and stuff. And, you know, don't put 17 different exclamation points in one email, um, which I have a problem with these days. Uh, but yeah, like I, I felt like I was not myself uh, at the beginning and I was professional John versus whenever they would meet me in person. And I'm just like, you know, laid back and telling jokes and and all of that. And it, there was a disconnect between who they were meeting online, on my website, through email, my social media, and then who they were meeting in person and actually working with. So yeah, mm-hmm. that being able to find myself and my voice and um, just come to them with authenticity and, uh, and being genuine, um, that has has really uh, like it, it is is moved the business forward because it has endeared them to me um and it's a very mm-hmm. quick like either attract or repel to where they come in and they're either like okay i like this john guy or okay this is not for me and we're on to the next uh so it's it's been really good uh it it's also you know that attracting and repelling um helps not waste my time or not waste their time you know chatting with me yeah <laughs> yeah and i feel like it's so for anyone starting a business whether you're a photographer or an online business owner i feel like that that need to want to be professional in the beginning i think is very common i know for me it stemmed from this place of because i didn't have formal training on like how to be a business owner i all of my fears that I had, I just packed into, well, if I sound professional enough, people will want to trust me oh, <laughs> and yeah. think that I know what I'm doing. So it was kind of this, like, all of my fears just, like, translated into this professional version of me to just hide, like, the fact that behind the scenes I felt like I had no idea what was going on. So I feel like it's a, it's probably a common feeling oh, if I had to guess. Oh, 100%. I was, I was right there with you. Like, that imposter syndrome <laughs> of... Oh, like I own a business now and they're they're coming to me and I have to to be there for them and like they're they're trusting me to show up on their wedding day. And like they're trusting that I know exactly what I'm doing and I don't really feel like I know exactly what I'm doing all the time. And yeah, that that fear of oh, are they going to figure out that I don't know what I'm doing and that I shouldn't actually be doing this? Uh, <laughs> that was that was definitely there. And that I mean it still pops up every now and then. I I think that imposter syndrome like it'll it'll definitely fade away. I feel like mine has has gotten very weak uh to where it doesn't pop up all that often, but every now and then I'm just like oh, wait, should I be doing this? And should people be paying me to do this? Um, so yeah, that, that fear, I think, is is pretty universal with a lot of people. Yeah, I feel like the imposter syndrome, it's like that person, the knock, the knock becomes a little bit quieter, but they still show up wearing like, it's like, yeah. well, we're, we're filming this the day after Halloween, yeah. so it's very relevant. <laughs> and like, they show up in a different costume, and all of a sudden you're like, who is this? Right. Um, you, no, you've already gotten like four of my Reese's peanut butter cups, so you don't need yeah. to come back anymore. <laughs> I'm not giving you any more. I'm giving you more than enough time and energy. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm curious too, because I, I know for you and I both, we kind of started our business in the realm, like before Instagram, before yeah. Pinterest, before, like before all of those things were really even there. So it was just kind of like word of mouth referrals, getting, you know, getting out there and meeting people. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear kind of, cause I know for me, it, it did kind of have to change obviously, because as I, as, as I grew and as my business grew, the marketing presence also shifted and I had to adapt um so I'd love to hear kind of your transition around that and how you've kind of allowed yourself to still kind of stay true to yourself even with like having the shift and having to adapt yeah yeah and that is it is strange because I a part of me remembers that time before Instagram and uh like before that was a business 
part of uh <laughs> of marketing and i was just mm-hmm. sharing pictures of my food and food yeah. and like really awful um terrible filters like just <laughs> yeah, the, really the, in the frames around yes yeah. <laughs> oh i remember those frames there's one with like garland around that i was like oh yeah. this is festive <laughs> hey merry christmas people and um yeah it's it's uh yeah, half of me remembers that, and the other half is like, I don't remember anything before social media because mm-hmm. it's taken mm-hmm. over. Um, but yeah, I I feel like it was the biggest shift for me was really showing up once video became a thing, like Instagram stories. Um, I was on Snapchat for a bit, I, I, but I, I never really grew many people there. Um, but Instagram was where I hung out as the millennial that I am uh, and I still hang out there but um, but yeah once video really started getting more popular and we had stories on Instagram I felt like that was a really easy way of showing who I was because even though it felt really weird staring at my phone and talking to it and then you know, putting captions or whatever and watching myself talk back. And like, even uh, I, I still like, even with podcast editing, I'm just like, Oh, is that how I sound? Like the, I feel like we all hear our voices differently in our heads. And then you hear mm. a recording of yourself. You're like, Ooh, okay. That's different. That's, that's, uh, that's a different <laughs> voice. Uh, but yeah, like that was something that I, I forget who it was, but they, they told me to, act like I was talking to my best friend, um, which was pretty easy. Cause I had like 120 followers and most of them were just friends. So I was like, I can get on there and I can talk to a friend. And that helped me like stay authentic and true to myself, um, on social media. Um, uh, and marketing wise, a lot of that has kind of shifted in the way of, um, when I first started my website, it was very proper, um, just like my, my emails that I talked about earlier. And then that moved into more of a conversational um, copy on my website and more of talking about what it is that my my target clients are wanting, what it is that they're wanting to avoid and being able to speak to that. And having that focus on my website and on uh, Instagram captions, stories, different live videos that I do, having that target of, oh, I know this desire of my target client. I can speak to this for 15 minutes on a live video, or I can write a paragraph about this for an Instagram caption. Um, Having that focus really allowed me to kind of shift that marketing to an easier conversational type of marketing than uh, I don't know what to put. And I'm just going to talk about myself and just write all of these things that everyone is just going to scroll right past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's so true. I, I also, I don't know about you, but I went through, well, and the website has gone through many iterations mm-hmm. of, you know, I think for me in the beginning, I also was not even sure I was speaking to other people's clients, clients that I thought that I wanted and not actually speaking to the clients that I had and that I actually enjoyed. Yeah. I was like speaking to this market that I thought like aspirational, like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. But then when I, you know, you finally get down to it, you realize actually like I love I love my clients. Like I love, you know, they're a little goofy. They're funny. Like they're not looking for like big over the top extravagant things. Cause I also don't really enjoy big <laughs> over the top extravagant things, but a lot of people that I followed yes. liked that. Oh, yeah. And so it was kind of like a, a struggle to even figure out, you know, sitting with myself long enough to figure out what actually is it that, what type of client do I want to work with and what does that look like so that I can actually write about that in a way that feels really authentic? Yes. Yeah. Mine was, was half of that. Cause I was seeing that and seeing like these luxury weddings with, you know, $20,000 floral arrangements. And I'm just like, that's what mm-hmm. I want. That would be so cool. Or destination flying all over, you know, to Dubai and things. I'm like, that would be fun. That's the target client that I want to talk to, but those mm-hmm. weren't the target clients that I was actually working with. Um, so half of mine was that as well, um, kind of chasing the, 
the the Instagram clout and like the the fun frilly things that you see out there. And then the other half was I was marketing to myself. And I it took years for me to realize that I was not my ideal client uh, because me like whenever I got married, we weren't going to spend a lot of money on a photographer like that was important but mm -hmm. we didn't have the budget for that we had to feed people and um and once i got past the uh, the idea that i was my ideal client and that i could see that i was no longer my ideal client or my ideal client was no longer me because uh, i used to just mm -hmm. market to myself I'm like what would i click on what would I scroll through and read um, and that was because I had no idea who my target client was and um, finally figuring out who that was allowed me to get to speak to them more and build that connection with just a random person finding my website on Google and it could speak to them instead of just you know me speaking to myself through website copy yeah, it does make a big difference because you do outgrow. Well, and when I started my business, mm -hmm. I was in college. and right. So I wasn't really doing a lot of weddings yet at that point. And it wasn't until I started working with couples and then you start to realize – or you start – it doesn't even have to be wedding photography. It can be any clients that you start working with. And then you start to understand what they actually want, <laughs> what they're actually looking for. Right. Um, but yeah, and I'd love to, I'd love to kind of hear about – because I think sometimes like marketing and social media for a lot of – creative online business owners today mm -hmm. kind of blend into one. Like it's like, what's your marketing strategy? And the answer is always, I'm on Instagram. Yes. Um, how, how do you feel like you differentiate those two? Or how do you feel like you show up in places that are not just Instagram? Yes. Um, I don't show up on Instagram much anymore. Um, like posting. I mean, I'll do some funny reels and stuff. Um, but that's mostly just because I like I always wanted to be like on SNL or something and do these skits. Yeah. And like, this is my time. I can do these. It's your audition. Exactly. They yeah. always say, create your own platform. Exactly. You're creating your own That's platform. That's it. <laughs> and you know, whenever I get 12 views, it's still okay. Cause I created it and it was fun. Um, but yeah, like uh, a, a lot of the marketing that I focused on and continue to focus on is relationship marketing where I am, uh, meeting with new vendors in the area. I am going on tours of these venues and putting a face to the name of uh, different vendors uh, and allowing them to put a face to my name and building those relationships. Uh, one, one of like my, uh, the, the, the website that has the most traffic that comes to, uh, from Google is my preferred vendors list. And I go like into detail of some of my favorite vendors that I work with and share that with mm -hmm. them. And they share that with their, uh, their group of, of clients and that relationship marketing, the, the networking really worked well. Cause I've, I've also moved markets three times since I started the business. So each time that was the best way that I could really jumpstart into a new market was all those relationships. Uh, mm -hmm. And through social media, you know, cultivating those relationships as well in the DMs and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of my, my marketing is centers around relationships and connections like that. Yeah, and I think that's so important because it's so much easier to build those genuine connections in person first mm. and, like you said, then cultivate them on Instagram as opposed to trying to start them on Instagram because, I mean, you can have the greatest intentions in the world, but I feel like half the time when people connect, it's like, are you just trying to sell me something? Right. <laughs> There's just this underlying oh, yeah. thought of like – and I think we even – we are afraid to connect with people sometimes because we don't want to come across as – I'm just trying to tell you, like, it's hard for people who want to build genuine connections, which is why I just think it's easier to start them outside of the platform, yes. start them in real life, get to know them first, and then comment on their posts, react to their stories, like send them messages. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that that's been a way that you've been able to grow because I think that's something that I always tell um, to clients if they're moving into a new market, if they feel like they're not getting any clients, it's getting that must, like, 
stretching that muscle a little bit of like, well, how many people are you actually getting to know in your community? Like, are you getting out there? Because all it takes sometimes is one person, one connection, and that can bring in so much more business than you could ever expect. Oh, yeah. That's when I moved to uh, my my current market. That's what I did. I, I went to one open house and I even, I took my, my son with me. He was a little bit over a year old at the time and we just walked around and I happened to sit down with the owner of the venue and I didn't even realize we just started chatting. And then I I think I booked probably five weddings at that venue within that next year. And that wasn't the, I, I think it's, it's really important not to have that as your main focus as you're building these relationships is not mm-hmm. okay. I'm going to build this relationship so that you will send what me people. Yeah, me? yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and it's so much better to to flip that on its head and build a relationship based on what can I provide you. Like even if I never get a single booking from you, what is it that I can? You know, do you need new headshots? Do you need photos of your venue? Do you want to do a styled shoot that you know breaks into a new market that you've been wanting to do but don't have the clientele who want to design that way? Um, and that kind of stuff that really will stand out because, as like you said, a lot of people you know they'll get those DMs of, hey, can I pick your brain? Or hey, can we meet up for coffee? And whenever you're coming there offering value, um, that's going to stand out in their eyes uh, from Mm -hmm. everyone else who's just wanting to get there so that they can get on their preferred vendor list. Yeah. And it does, it, it, it does make such a difference. And I think the, the mindset shift that we have to make when we're making these connections is very similar to the mindset shift that we have to make when we're growing our business Mm -hmm. is if we are only focused on clients and money and income, like it's going to feel like a struggle. And it's the same thing as when you're coming into relationships with, well, what is this relationship going to give to me? Like it, you're coming in from the place where it doesn't, feel very good right. <laughs> um feels like you're chasing a lot of things that maybe you don't want to be chasing but it does require us to kind of take a step back and just be like you know what it'll it'll grow at the pace that it's meant to grow at and kind of relinquishing that control on what we think you know and I and I understand there's there's budgets and there's you know people need to make money there's an importance around that but it's like instead of trying to just chase after more things it's like well but how about you just like get out there and meet more people yeah. and just see what opportunities present themselves oh yeah yeah and there are so many you know especially in the wedding industry there's so many open houses that you can just go to as a vendor and walk through and meet people Um, Mm -hmm. you don't have to have a booth there and uh and that i mean that happened at one that i went to and i didn't have a booth and i happened to meet the owners and told them i was a photographer the next time that they had an open house they offered me a booth because another photographer had backed out and uh and then there are you know 10 other times that that didn't happen and it Mm -hmm. was just I was just there and got to meet people and got to you know expand my my circle of vendor friends yeah I love that Hey there, just interrupting briefly to mention that if you're really enjoying this episode, you'll probably also love being on my email list. Each week, I send out tips and resources and inspiration to make building your business feel more fun. We dive deeper into the podcast episodes, we share relatable and sometimes embarrassing stories about the real life behind the scenes of being a business owner. And I love to share tips and resources to help make the journey feel a little easier and a little bit more enjoyable. So head on over to KristaMarieLynch.com and enter in your info to join. And then I'd love to just talk quickly about, so kind of mark past the marketing stage. Mm. So once you're actually like working with your clients, what are, what are some ways that you feel like you've been able to kind of throw in like, this is like the John client experience. Like this is how this is different from like, you know, other photographers. Yes. Yeah. A lot of that was finding my voice, uh, kind of like what we talked to you about earlier was figuring out who I was, uh, before I even interact with them. And, um, and I, I use voice memos a lot uh, when it comes to like writing copy on my website or blogs and just talk into my phone and then transcribe that later. So it's actually 
like quite literally my voice. And with that, I was really able to find who I was. Um, cause I also <laughs> backstory into, uh, uh, you know, young John, I tried to be everything for everyone and I was a people pleaser and mid twenties realized I didn't really know who I was because I always wanted to be this for this person. But then whenever mm-hmm. I was hanging out with this person, I wanted to be this. And, um, and so I was kind of going through an identity crisis of who am I really? What is it that I like? You know, is this how I act or, you know, am I, am I more goofy? Am I more, you know, straight laced, whatever. Um, so finding that about myself really helped be able to, um, to use my own voice in speaking to my clients. Um, and one of the ways that I really get to know my clients well and like show up with energy to, uh, discovery calls and, you know, consultations is asking questions and actually listening to the questions. I think a lot of times we ask questions like, Oh, Hey, you know, how did, how did y'all propose? You know, when did you start dating and all of that? And then our reply to that is just like, okay, cool. Tell me about your wedding day. And just like go straight into the next thing. And, um, that is kind of showing them, you know, possibly subconsciously, uh, but they might pick up on it that you're not really too interested in what they have to say, what their answers are to these questions. You're just, these are just questions that you're ticking off because they're on a checklist and you need to get through this Mm -hmm. in order to get to, you know, what package can I put together for you? Um, but yeah, listening to them and then asking those follow-up questions of just like, Oh wow. Like why, why is that? Or tell me more about this and showing that you're genuinely interested in what they have to say. That goes a long way when it comes to uh, communicating with your clients. Mm -hmm. I know it's it's such a big transition isn't it when we go from because it is nerve-wracking whether you're starting off in business Mm -hmm. like whether you've been in business for a while sometimes these interactions can feel stressful and we get into the mode of just like how can I sell myself we get into like selling mode but it 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 does make such a difference when you this whole I feel like the subconscious level of what this whole episode has been about is like let's flip that around a little bit and ask ourselves like how can I just really be here for you today like how can I just you know you leave this interaction and feel just that much more excited about the way that your fiance proposed or like you know this random hobby that you like to do like what's one way that you can walk away feeling more joyful or happier yes. or whatever it is oh yeah um it makes such a difference and it also takes the pressure off of you to feel like you need to somehow come up with all of these perfect ways of saying things and having the answers uh, it just is a win-win, I feel like, for everybody. Yes, yeah. It takes away that pressure of like, okay, this is my script. This is my elevator pitch. I have to say it exactly this way with this cadence or they're just, it's not going to hit. Um, and like mm-hmm. you you absolutely nailed it, what, what you were saying earlier about how they feel whenever you're speaking to them. Um, there's a, a quote by Maya Angelou that I love that she said um, – that people, okay, people will forget the way, or uh, people will forget what you said, and they will forget what you did, but they will never forget the way that you made them feel. And that should be our focus whenever we're speaking with our clients, is how can you make them feel something? Instead of Mm -hmm. just coming into a sales interaction of, all right, this is what I have, do you want to buy it? This is the price and let's move on to the next person. It feels more transactional and more like they're just a number on your, all right, this is wedding number 20 for this year. And whenever you can make them feel something, uh, even if you know, some of the, some of my best discovery calls, we rarely talk about the wedding and we're just talking about them and I'm asking about them and they're feeling seen and heard and wanted and then they leave and they're like, okay, like, you know, they're probably meeting with four or five other photographers and then they're going back thinking about those meetings and they remember me and the way that they felt during that meeting. And they're like, okay, that's how I want to feel with someone around on my wedding day. So 
Mm -hmm. Let's go back and, you know, kind of iron out a package plan there. Um, but like you, you also mentioned, you know, uh, the, the theme of this whole conversation of showing up and being there for them and being a resource for your clients and potential clients is huge. If you can show up with value and, uh, just like not, not expecting any reciprocation, just, I am here. I'm going to share this with you. I have, uh, I have a wedding planning guide that's like 60 something pages long. And that goes out of my first email whenever, uh, whenever they're coming back, uh, or getting that initial inquiry back is, Hey, this is something that I've put together from the years that I've been doing weddings. And I want you to have this. And it's not, I'm keeping this until you book with me, yeah. but here, I'm going to show you value. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that, you know, if, if, uh, cause that is a, a little bit, you know, it's, it's a big guide, but it could be a blog post that you put together about, you know, uh, what first looks look like and, you know, the importance mm -hmm. of doing that and how that's a, a more intimate, uh, part of your day than seeing each other down the aisle and that kind of value as well showing up with that value and being that resource for them is going to is going to go for miles for sure yeah and I love that you said that because that's I feel like that's a conversation that I have with some of my clients because they're they're afraid that if they if they provide all of this up front right like there's this fear then of like well mm. I'm basically giving them the resources that they need to then go work with someone else and it's like the the message I always try and convey is like the right clients like at the end of the day you could give them a step by step of everything but if well first of all realistically if they take it to another photographer another photographer is probably going to be like cool I'm not going to follow someone else's right, guide yeah. <laughs> like, at the end of the day um so like you don't actually need to be worried about that but also like you know the right clients they're going to see that and they're going to see the value and they're going to be like oh my gosh if she's already if he's already giving me this yeah. imagine what the rest of the experience is going to look like like but we get into this fear mode of, oh, I don't want to give away too much too soon. But then it's like, but are we really giving the value during the whole experience? Like people people won't even know how much you have behind the curtain if you're not really showing anything right. up front. Yeah, because it's, it's almost like you're, you're keeping everything back behind that curtain. And it's like, okay, once they give me that deposit, I'm just going to show them this entire treasure, treasure trove of resources yeah. and guides and templates and it all these things. It reminds me of like the price is right. Yeah. Like Bob Barker would like open up the curtain uh -huh. and all of a sudden there's all this stuff <laughs> and your clients are just thinking like, wait, wait, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. You, you showed me this tiny little watch and made me guess a price exactly. on it. <laughs> <laughs> and there was all of this that you had to give me? There's a speedboat. There's a car. Right. There's a, a new house. You yeah, know? <laughs> a Roy Hill dinette set. We've got everything in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like uh. if you're holding all of that back, they can kind of feel that too. The, even like the, the couples that do book you. And then you're like, all right, cool. Now that you've given me money, here's all of this value. They can feel that and they can... Uh, they can notice that like, oh, well, that was like hidden until we paid, but it means so much more whenever you can, uh, whenever you can provide that value before they've even done anything for you. They haven't mm -hmm. sent a penny and you are already providing value. And sometimes you're going to provide value for couples that aren't a good fit or aren't in your budget. Yep. And they are still going to find that I, I've had couples before where they were not in my budget and they were like, okay, we were hoping we could, we can't swing this, but they had friends that were getting engaged and they have been mm -hmm. at three different weddings that I've photographed because they've told their friends like, Hey, we wanted to hire this guy. We couldn't do it they still got a, a, you know, a good photographer. Um, but mm -hmm. they're like, if you can get John, like go, he's, he knows what he's doing. And whenever you can provide that value, you may not book that person, but that person may mm -hmm. talk to you, um, and, and spread your name to someone else who will book with you later. 
Yeah, I feel like it's, again, it's like shifting from that like scarcity mindset to knowing that yes. like your clients are out there. And again, each interaction, each relationship, talking about relational marketing, each time you meet with someone, they may not be the right fit. Nothing might happen from it. And like learning to not take that so personally, yeah. but remembering that there will be doors that open with each interaction and each time you give value. Oh, so. yeah. I love that. Yeah. And like that scarcity mindset of, you know, the the oversaturated market and there are only so many couples getting married. 2022 was a record setting year for the number of weddings that took place. It was like 42 million or something. I don't know the exact number, but it was it was a crazy amount that like it hasn't been that many people since the 80s. So mm-hmm. there are enough people for you. Um, you only need a certain number of weddings. Maybe it's 20, maybe 30, 50. I don't know how busy you want to be. But, um, you know, I I try and cap mine around 20 in a year. And that means I just have to speak to 20 people. And that's it. I, I don't have to go yeah. out there and bring in a thousand people and talk to them. But I just have to speak and connect to 20 people. And that's going to fill my calendar. And I'm going to be able to provide value for them and give them the space and time that I can um, for those 20 people. And, you know, some some other ways that you can do that, not necessarily like once they've uh, inquired and you're in a discovery call, but having educational blog posts and a good like FAQ section on your website, um, like those blog posts, if you can write something about uh, using the the experience that you have as a photographer and speak on it from a photographer's point of view of, you know, these are some, you know, non-traditional, uh, you know, ser- not ceremonies, but like non-traditional aspects of a uh, wedding ceremony that you can, instead of, you know, pouring sand, you can, you know, uh, I, I'm in texas so uh we we have branding at weddings now where people like make their own custom brand and then they brand this leather uh deal to put on their wall yeah Yeah. i i I, i'm i'm not uh that's not me uh (laughs) i'm i'm not the the country (laughs) kind of guy i'm a i'm a city guy um but like that's something non-traditional uh that you could Mm -hmm. i mean i could write a whole blog about that that would attract more of those people and that not necessarily my ideal client um but you can think about your ideal clients and write those blogs to where you're just speaking about what you've experienced and you're sharing that with them and that mm-hmm. stuff that people will read and then they will share that with a friend and be like, oh, I never thought about doing a first look with my bridesmaids. Let me share that with my friend who's getting married. And then that's bringing more and more eyes onto your website and your work uh, yeah. and providing value. So they know, oh, they're already providing this value for free on their website. There's going to be so much more once I hire them. Yeah, and I think it's so important to remember too because I think another kind of tight or not a tight spot but a mindset block when I talk to clients with creating content is this idea that, well, I need to write the blog post and then it's it needs to immediately take off or it needs to immediately bring yeah. in things. And it's, again, like flipping that mindset to be like, okay, I'm going to build this foundational base of blog posts so that when inquiries come in and I feel like something could be helpful, I'm just going to start getting in the muscle of sharing these things and sharing them with people knowing it might take time. But again, you mentioned that one of your most performing, I mean, for SEO, right, having like a list of preferred vendors, Mm -hmm. venues, like listing all of that out, linking to them, sharing it with them. Those types of things are going to be so transformational to bring people onto your website. And then if you already have this backlog of helpful blog posts, right, it's just, it's only going to grow from there. Yes. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's so easy to, once you have that, that log of all of these different blog posts that you can speak to different things, when you have someone inquire about, like, I don't know a good hair and makeup artist. Like, I wrote this blog post highlighting three that are amazing in this area. Let me send that over to you. Or you can mm-hmm. even repurpose. I love repurposing content uh, for, you know, from blogs to uh, to podcasts to, uh, you know, Facebook Lives. I have a Facebook group for local um, engaged couples that I'll just 
almost verbatim just read a blog post that I put up and I'll just do that live and allow them to ask me questions. Um, Mm -hmm. But like from, from your blog post, you can repurpose that into social media captions. And a lot of times that can go into four or five different posts that you can put throughout Mm -hmm. the month. Um, And also in the DMS, whenever someone's, you know, reaching out to you, you can be like, Oh, I actually wrote this amazing blog post. Let me send that over. And it's just, it, uh, it's not the, like the firework, the quick, you know, microwave, uh, of like, we're just going to put this in 30 seconds. Boom. This is warm enough. Now it's new client, new client. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) New client in a mug. Uh, but (laughs) it's, it's more of like a, a slow cooker where you set it and is, is set it and forget it. Was that crock pot? Is that their, is that their deal? <laughs> that's all. That's what I thought of when you okay. said it. So we're going to okay, go. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to go with that. You just set your blogs and you forget them and, mm-hmm. uh, and then they continue to work. Uh, you know, blogs from three years ago can continue to work. You can post those pins on Pinterest and those are going to keep showing up. And people will continue to to come to your website, and uh, which is why I, you know, I mentioned earlier I'm I don't post a lot on like posts on Instagram, and that's why because those posts last two or three days, and then they're yeah, gone, and then they're buried in your feed, yeah. and no one is scrolling yeah, that far. No, <laughs> no, reels have a slightly longer shelf life of like a couple weeks, but that's just because Instagram yeah. is like pointing toward reels right now. And, uh, but blogs, there's blogs that I wrote five years ago that still bring traffic to my website. And, uh, you know, there's one pin that I pinned on Pinterest, like, uh, let's see, 2014, like, you know, eight, nine years ago, it is the largest, it still brings the most people. And it was just a, a little, uh, flower girl with a bubble gun. And that was it. But it's bringing people to my website and people are, are seeing yeah. more of my work. That is better quality because that was nine years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you take those old blog posts, you put in some new pictures, you know, you kind of exactly. you can spruce them up a yeah. little bit. But, Which is also great um, for SEO think, whenever you update those yes, pictures. Yes, you're updating uh-huh. old content. Yeah. And it's I love that you mentioned, too, because it really does. It makes your current marketing. If you can create, you know, a handful of blog posts, it's going to make all the rest of your social media marketing so easy. Because like you said, you could take if you have an entire blog post of 800 to 900 words, that's like 12 reels. You know what I mean? Like you can you can chunk that into so many different pieces of content. And I think sometimes people feel a little stuck like oh it just feels too hard to create it but it's like if you really just I think the bigger thing is just if you trust yourself enough to know that you have content that's worth sharing and you write the blog post you share the content you're going to make it so much easier on yourself whenever you go to share and talk about things and remembering that your audience is constantly changing and uh, whenever you're posting on social media um you're getting seen by like 6% of your followers on average per post. So if you post, you know, you have those nine different reels that you're putting together, or you have like, you know, carousels and posts that you're uh, putting on social media, you can do that again in a few months and it's no one's going to, yeah, remember. no one's going to remember, um, you know, maybe your mom is in there like liking every single, <laughs> single thing, you know, has the alerts popped up, um, uh, you know, and then she's not following anybody else. Then, yeah. So she only remembers your content. Yeah, it's just your <laughs> Instagram feed. Yeah. That is the only thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's, there might be a few people, but no one is just like, Ugh, Krista posted this again. Like she just talked yeah, about oh this gosh. four months ago. Why is she talking about yeah, it? Yeah, like I know she likes dogs at sessions. How many yeah. times is she going to say she likes dogs? Exactly. <laughs> but like all that it has to be is just one more person that sees that dog post and they're just like, but I have four dogs. This will be amazing. Like she loves dogs. I'm going to bring all of my dogs and a handler <laughs> to handle them whenever we're taking yes. our photos. <laughs> Cause I have a blog post that has tips on how to bring your dogs yes. to sessions. Oh, but yes. <laughs> like you said, yeah, it's all, it is, it's all related. And it really just, uh, I think a lot of it does kind of come back to like, trust yourself enough to know that the content you have is worth sharing mm. and people actually want 
to hear it yes. and read it and like it's important and it matters yeah. and that brings us all the way back to imposter syndrome and like <laughs> believe in yourself that you what you do matters and that you are good at what you do and you may not be as good as Susie down the road but you know she might have like a special gift that she's just super talented and picked up right away or she maybe has been doing this for 20 years and you don't know Mm -hmm. but and you only just found her and saw her how much she's grown and the best way to overcome imposter syndrome is to not like pit yourself against other people and compare yourself but compare yourself to past you what was i like Mm -hmm. in 2019 oh i have improved okay then that's great. Like as long as I'm improving, my goal is to improve like 1% every day. Because if I can do that, it's, you know, you know, three times better uh, of myself at the end of the year. And I'm just constantly getting better and it's tiny little baby steps. But whenever you compare yourself to your past self, then there is no imposter syndrome because that's you. And uh, yeah. yeah. And, And whenever you feel that empowerment of what I'm doing matters and what I have to say matters and is going to help people, then that's going to give you all the confidence that you need to get out there and share that with people. And it would be a disservice to them not to share it Mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. And you start to show up differently, like to yourself, to other people. It's, it's such a big difference. Oh yeah. Oh, well, I feel like I could just talk to you all day. We we literally (laughs) could. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but this was so wonderful. I mean, thank you so much. Um, I feel like this message is so important and I'm really glad that we were able to talk about this today, but let us know where can we find you? How can we connect with you? I'd love for you to share all of that. Yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I, I know I said I don't post very much, but I am in the DMS (laughs) and the stories all day, every day. Um, and you can find me at all heart photo. Um, and for more business education, uh, and all that, uh, some more resources is, uh, allheartphoto.com slash education. Um, and, uh, and then I also have a podcast, uh, that Krista, you were a guest on episode 120 and, uh, that was the light and dark photography podcast. And you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. I love that. And I did see, too, you had a freebie that you added in there, too. I, I thought it was really funny because I was like, oh, forward slash Chris yeah. guy. Yeah. so special. Custom <laughs> URL. <laughs> yeah. So I do have – thank you for reminding me about that. Um, I, my email template guide, um, it's – uh, let's see, 11 different email templates that kind of go through from initial inquiry to booking. Um, so I have that along with, uh, a, a text template, uh, for, you know, whenever people are ghosting you, you can text them. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I have that, that is at allheartphoto.com slash Krista. And, uh, and that is absolutely free for your listeners. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, John. This is just an amazing conversation. I'm just so honored to have you today. I am honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And I absolutely loved getting to chat with you again. One last thing before you go, I'd absolutely love it if you left a review on Apple Podcasts. Or if you've already left a review, I'd love for you to share this episode with your business bestie. I love getting to shout out my listeners on the show and the more listeners that we have, the more that I can help others create a thriving and sustainable business too. Thank you so much again for being a part of this community and I can't wait to hear your takeaways from today's episode.